Want a place where your child can get excited about learning about God? Children's Ministry at Good Hope is a place where your child will be taught to love God, love all people, and change the world through age-appropriate activities, interactive worship, sports, music, and art. Through our Gospel Project Sunday Worship, weekly Awana Bible Clubs, Upward Sports League, and Summer Vacation Bible School, your child will be ministered to year-round. Remember, your child is a gift from God. Welcome to Word of Hope Ministries. I'm your host, Dr. D.Z. Cofield, Senior Pastor at the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church. One of the most fascinating bodies of water in the world today is the Dead Sea. I've had an opportunity to be there on several occasions. And what is fascinating about the Dead Sea is that even though it is a sea or a body of water, nothing lives in it. No life, no organism can live in it. Now you ask why? That's because of the high salt content in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea salt content is five to 10 times higher than some salt water that we know exists around our country. That salt content is high, why? Because water and nutrients and minerals flow into the Dead Sea, but there is no way for it to flow out. So when you get into the Dead Sea, it is almost like being in a liquid salt bath and you just lie back in it. You don't sink. You don't have to worry about sinking or, or, or going to the bottom. It is almost impossible to hit the bottom when you lay back. Toxicity goes up when things come in, but they don't go out. My brothers and my sisters, if you're not careful, the love that God has for you that you receive to help you develop a healthy love for yourself might become toxic and manifest itself in egocentrism if you don't learn how to give God's love to you to others. As we continue our look at this message, love, get it, grasp it, and give it, the next step you need to focus on is how to give the love that you've received from God to others. Let's get to our message. Number one, you need to accept the fact that God loves you. Number two, you need to have a healthy love for God. Here's the third thing. Number three, you need to give love to others. You need to give love to others. Verse 31, Mark 12, and the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You should love your neighbor as yourself. Now remember, the commandment is not to love yourself. Loving you in terms of loving yourself is assumed. But here's the problem that the Holy Spirit understands. Too many of us stop at loving ourselves and never exercise loving our neighbor. Now, there was a time when we were more stable in terms of our housing and stationary in terms of our situations and families grew up in neighborhoods that you knew your neighbors. Um, I live in Third Ward and I, I love getting to meet my neighbors. Not, not just the folk that live 
next to me. I mean, I, just, just the characters, the people that live in the community, you know. The guy that drove, rode by, not drove, rode by on his bicycle and saw my son's truck and said, hey, man, what's going on with that truck? Hey, I can fix that truck. Just give me a call. I said, all right, man, give me a call. Hey. Or I pull up to my house and the lady says, hey, man, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Said, yes, ma'am, I sure am. And she looks, she says, are you Dr. Phil? <laughs> no, 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 you're Dr. You're Dr. Cofield, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Oh, praise God. I just, and then she wants to go into this long diatribe, and I'm like, I'm good. Yeah, praise God. Let me go home. Good. <laughs> right, but, but you get to meet unique people. You know, the brother that plays the horn on the corner provides music to the neighborhood when the TSU band is not practicing, you know. No, no, no. You can't say you live in Third Ward and not be able to hear the TSU band, the Ocean of Soul, practicing. Oh, man, I got stereophonic music every night. <laughs> and when they're not playing at night, man, this brother's blowing his horn during the day. And when I pull out, I nod at him. He nods at me, lets me know, man, he's watching out for my house. That's what I'm talking about, neighbors. <laughs> Loving others is a commandment. It's not a choice. One of the reasons we're adjusting our mission, just to give you a preview. When I say loving God, everybody in here says, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Pitied every groan. I say loving people. You say, oh, yeah, I love people. And you're right, you do love people. You love all the people you love. So when I say, do you love people, you think about the people you love. And you say, loving people? Yeah, I love people. I love Dean Tibbs. I love Dean Thomas. I love Dean Green. I love Dean Witchett. I love uh, Dean Larry. I love Dean Nichols. I, I, I can think of at least four or five people I love. But when I say loving all people, now we pull some people into the equation that you ain't real fond of. <laughs> like, do you love everybody? Then we want to get spiritual. Well, you know, I love everybody in Christ. <laughs> well, can you love everybody in practice? Even the people that can be hard to love at times. Look at John 13, beginning at verse 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Your love for one another is an obedient response to the command of God, that you love one another. That's the sign. That's the sign that you are on the road of being a Christ follower. We should see some love as a sign. Uh, you, 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 you're driving, and uh, maybe you're on 95 or I-10. You know if you're from Texas that you're coming into Texas when you start seeing Whataburgers. Whataburgers is a sign. Uh, Bucky's is a sign. I've never seen a Bucky's in New York. I've never seen a Bucky's in Pennsylvania. But when I start seeing a Bucky's, I know I'm getting close. It's a sign. If I'm driving up 45 and I see a sign that says Dallas, 180 miles, that's a sign to let me know that I'm on the right road. Jesus says, by this all men will know that you are my disciples. Not your ability to speak in tongues. Not your ability to dance, shout, or sing. 
Not your ability to look churchy on Sunday. Not based on where you live. Not based on what you drive. He says, we will know that you are my disciples by your showing love. Now, who are we to give this love to? A, we are to give love to our friends. Our family and our friends. That's just natural, right? Our brothers and sisters in this spiritual family. Regardless of our social differences and our diverse tastes and habits, we are commanded, we are bound together to give love. And love, based on 1 Corinthians 13, doesn't assume the worst, it assumes the best. Right? Love is patient. Love is kind. And it's amazing. We had a situation happen this past week. And um, some personality conflicts. And, and a big part of it was the devil, I think, just try, trying to thwart what we were planning to do yesterday. And I had a conversation with one of our staff members, and I said, you know what's interesting? It's interesting how people assume they are more spiritual than they really are. And they assume other people are less spiritual than they really are. So we look at other people and say, yeah, they need to grow in Christ. <laughs> they need to get closer to Jesus. Never looking in the mirror to see how far away from being like Jesus they are. We never start with assuming and coming with an attitude of service to help somebody be better, we expect them to come and arrive as a finished product that we will approve of. And if we don't approve of them, then there must be something wrong with their walk with God. It sounds like a lover of self in Jesus' name. Because I'm going to make this thing revolve around me instead of around the cross recognizing that the ground is level at the foot of the cross. You must realize the Lord has given us the model for how we are to love others. He says, love one another, and then watch what Jesus says, verse 34. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Hold on. Hold on. What'd you say, Jesus? Jesus said, just in case you're wondering how to love one another, Look back and see how I loved you. And that's the standard by which you should love one another. So, when we were asking that question, what would Jesus do? You know, there's a series of questions we can ask closely related to that. One would be, how would Jesus love? How would Jesus love? So, when you find somebody that is unlovable or acting in an unlovely way, Ask yourself, how would Jesus love? And maybe then, instead of responding from a place of self-centeredness, finding offense in what somebody says or does, even though they don't know you, maybe you will start loving like Jesus and give them love at their worst place in order to help them move to where God wants them to be. Jesus says, this is a new commandment I'm giving you. Now, the idea of love was not new, but the idea of loving sacrificially was new. That was a new thing, loving like Jesus loved, right? Because you remember, they would love their friends and hate their enemies. <laughs> Jesus said, oh, no, new kind of love. Love your enemies. Do good to those who do bad to you. New kind of love. You love people who can love you back. Jesus said, new kind of love. Love people, period. Whether they can give you love back or not, be loving. Be a reflector of my love. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us a pleasing aroma to God. I want you to think about that phrase, imitate God. 
Um, I was on social media the other day and, and, and I found this uh, comedian. Um, I, I never heard him before. I don't get a chance to watch a lot of television, but they said he's about to leave Saturday Night Live. Um, African-American gentleman. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Jay, huh? Anybody know his name? Jay Farrell, is that his name? Yeah. And so I had never seen him before. And so, you know, I'm clicking and, and I love impersonations. And typically when I hear somebody that's really good at impersonating people, I close my eyes to see if they really sound like the person. And so this guy was going through a litany of people he was impersonating. I mean, he was good. He was good, right? And I'm going, wow, man, that's tremendous. Man, he sounds just like Eddie Murphy. He got the laugh, uh, uh, uh. I mean, he got the laugh, everything, right? And I'm like, man, he sounds just like Lil Wayne. Man, he sounds just like Jay-Z. I mean, I mean, it sounds just like them. You close your eyes, you can see their face. And watch this. If somebody listened to you talk and they closed their eyes, could they see Jesus? When they hear the words that are coming out of your mouth, would they say, ooh, that sounds like Jesus. I had a moment, I had a moment, and I had to apologize. I had a moment where I blew up, I, I, lo I lost it. I lost it and there was no excuse. And I know what came out of my mouth didn't sound like Jesus. Matter of fact, it scared me. Because I knew what I said and how I said it was not God glorifying or edifying to any saints. I'm confessing, I'm telling you, this thing can creep up on you, in you, and come out of you at any moment. None of us are immune from this happening. But you've got to ask yourself, are you imitating God to the place that when folk watch you, they see God? Brandon and I were standing at an event together, and somebody walked up and they said, that's your son, huh? And I said, yeah, that must, that's my youngest son. I said, why do you say that? He said, man, you probably don't know this. Y'all stand the same way. <laughs> he said, man, I was standing over there watching. He said, I'm like, man, how do them two brothers must know each other? I mean, y'all stood the same way. When you walked, he walked just like you. Like you had the same gait in your stride and everything else. Well, guess what? He's my son. So if he's my son, he should reflect the fact that I'm his father. You should reflect the fact that God is your father. Go to B. Give love to all people, even your enemies. Give love to all people, even your enemies. enemies. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Watch this. If the sun shines on everyone, if the sun shines on the just and the unjust, if the rain falls on the just and the unjust, here's what the Lord is saying to you. Just like the sun shines on everyone, then you need to make sure your love is given to everyone. Sunshine is not given based on who deserves it. Rain is not given to anyone based on who deserves it. And the same criteria should be used when you're trying to discover or discern who should get your love. You got to love saints and sinners. Love the saints, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. If someone says, I love God but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their Christian brothers and sisters. So watch this. Man, when, 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 when John writes this, he's talking about the lack of love in the body of Christ. 
like, like the church was not a place of love for one another. Kind of hard to love those outside when we can't learn how to love each other on the inside. If you can't say amen, say ouch. But you not only ought to love the saints, you should love sinners as well. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. I'm not going to read it all, but let me just highlight a couple. Love your enemies, verse 27. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Verse 31, that's really the golden rule. <laughs> now, we typically like to quote the golden rule when it comes to people doing unto us. But we don't like to quote the golden rule when it comes to responding to mistreatment from others towards us. Look at the context, because that's a heavy lineup. Uh, love your enemies? Do good to the ones who hate you? <laughs> really? Jesus, wait a minute, bless those who curse me? I mean, I'll bless them. <laughs> I'll bless them out, I ain't, you know. But you want me to bless them? Wait a minute. Person's abusing me? You want me to pray for that person? They hit you on the cheek, turn the other? Take my coat, give them my shirt? Like, Jesus, are you serious? And then he says, oh, there. and by the way, a little thing called the golden rule. Do unto others the way you would have them to do unto you. So, when you do somebody else wrong, how do you want them to respond to you? He says, that's how I want you to respond to others. Now, one of the things that you need to get out of this message is loving others is a command from God. While loving yourself is assumed, loving others is a command. That's why Jesus says in John 13, I give you a new, what, commandment. You see, it's not enough for you to say, I love the Lord because he heard my cry, and I have a healthy view of myself, and then I don't demonstrate that love that God has for me and the love, healthy love that I have for myself, I don't demonstrate it or allow it to flow out of me. It is by love that we impact the lives of others. It is by love that we show other people how much God loves them. It is by our love for one another, and talk, I'm talking about now in the body of Christ, our love for one another, that we show the world how powerful love is. How much do we love our friends? How much do we love our family members? How much do we love those around us? I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, that there are many of us who say we have love, but we say it more than we show it. Or we do things that are rooted in anger and hatred and then turn around and say, but I love you. No, if we are truly loving the way God has called us to love, then that love needs to manifest itself in a way listen carefully, that edifies those we say we love, that builds up those we say we love. Now, that doesn't mean they're always going to agree. That doesn't mean they're always going to feel good or positive about a decision. But here's what it does mean. When you step back and look at the love that's given, the love that's given should always be about building up, not tearing down, so that people are better because of your love and not bitter and angry because of your love. So make sure you love in a way that honors God and builds people. The Holy Land. Join Dr. D.Z. Cofield and Heavenly Matched Christian Travel, November 27th through December 8th. Pray at the Wailing Wall. 
Walk the final steps of Jesus to the cross along the Via Della Rosa. Sail on the Sea of Galilee. Get baptized in the Jordan River and many more historic sites. For more information, call Ron Ward at 713-520-8095. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime trip to the Holy Land. When the disciples were struggling with how to pray, they went to the Lord and said, Lord, teach us to pray. I believe many of us need to do the same thing when it comes to love. We need to go to Jesus and say, Jesus, teach us how to love. And he literally gives us not just a command to love, but he models for us the kind of love that we are to give. Now remember, the love that we give is not based on the love that we receive from others. It's not based on the love that we receive from others before we got to somebody, and it's not based on the love that we receive from the person that we're loving. Our love should be based and rooted foundationally in God's love for us. In Ephesians chapter five, Paul tells us we should imitate God in our love. Now you know that word imitate, it brings to mind that idea of impersonating somebody. Um, I love to hear good impersonators. And typically impersonators bring the whole package, right? They'll bring the look, they'll, they'll exaggerate the gestures and the movements. Uh, but the best impersonators that I've ever heard are the ones that you can close your eyes and you think you're listening to that person. You don't have to see the movements and the gestures. That's a wonderful, wonderful addition. But the best impersonators, when you hear them impersonate somebody, you close your eyes and you think that you're listening to the person they're impersonating. Well, watch this. When we imitate God, people should open their eyes and see so much God in our actions that they say, that's a child of God. Good Hope would like to invite you to attend our Bible study Wednesday at noon, corporate prayer at 6.30 p.m. and Bible study at 7 p.m. Care is provided in the evening for children ages three years old to fifth grade. For more information, call us at 713-524-6578 or visit us online at goodhope.org. Dr. D.Z. Cofield explores pain in the raw. Man, those broken promises can be devastating. Dr. D.Z. Cofield digs in where others shy away. I mean, there's people right now who are grown, who still live with the scar of a broken promise of a dad who said, I'm gonna come pick you up. Watch Dr. D.Z. Cofield on theCUBE, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. and Sundays at 6.30 a.m.